We'll have seven classes during this time. We want to try to touch, give an outline of seven subjects related to Rana Tattva. So first of all, it's essential to discuss the bhaktas, Radha's devotees. Because without the Kripa, the mercy of pure Vaishnavas, it is impossible to approach this subject at all. So we'll discuss that today. Tomorrow morning, we'll discuss Radha Dham, the glories of Holy Name. And in the evening, we'll discuss Radha Dham. Only. May our hearts always take pleasure in the kunjas of Vrindavan where Radhika is wandering. So we're proposing another servant tacos. So Radha Dham. Then after that, we'll discuss one class on Radha Gun, Radhika's qualities. And then after that, Radha's Parikar associates of Sakis. And that will coincide with Lalita Saptami, the day we celebrate the glories of Lalita Sati. Then, after that, we'll discuss one class on Radha's Lila, Lila Tantra. And then, finally, in the last class of this festival, Radha's Seva. Hmm? Because why are we hearing all these things? only to attain Radha Sira, to please her. <coughs> then I believe there will be one more extra program that was mostly added by Nashinda Prabhu on my one day off. Before <laughs> 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 the next festival. <laughs> yes. and so, there will be, so we're beginning today with the Bhaktas. That's right. You know, Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhartha Thakur, he gave the definition of the Gaudiya Mat. He said, in a world which is filled with the avidvadhuti of words, that means my illusory interpretations and understandings of words. The Gaudiya Mat is the place where the Vidvat Ruti, that means the pure transcendental meanings of words, makes its appearance. This is the Gaudiya Mat. The place where the Vidvat Ruti of words, that means the profound spiritual meaning of all words, as they understood by Vidvats, the learned persons, enlightened, pure Vaishnavas, that going back is a place where that descends. Because actually, we use words all the time. And uh, even in devotional circles, often we use words like Shravan, Kirtan, Smaran, Sadhana, Bhav, and so on, but without a clear understanding, really, of the Vidva to the actual power of the words. So the Vidva Dhruti meaning of Gaudiya comes from Gaura. Gaura means, you know, the sugar, you see the sugar? Gaura. It comes from Gaura. It means natural sweetness. Natural sweetness. And Gaura, Gaudiya also comes from Gauri. Gauri is a name of Radharani. So who is a Gaudiya Vaishnava? This is the Vidva routine meaning. How does the vibration, Gaudiya, appear in the consciousness of the pure Vaishnavas? The word Gaudiya appears in their consciousness as those who relish the natural sweetness of Radha Seva. They are Gaudiyas. <laughs> so Radhika is only known through her bhaktas. So we are very fortunate today. You are blessing me with this opportunity to purify myself 
by glorifying baptism. The Vaishnavas. Prachit Maharaj posed a question to Shukadeva Goswami. So when Shukadeva Goswami heard it, he said, Sadhu Pristam Maharaja Harish Charitam Adhutam Yan Bhagavata Mahatmyam Bhagavad Bhakti Vartanam. Oh, Maharaj, Prachit Maharaj, you've asked a very wonderful question. Meritorious question because it relates to the astonishing pastimes of the Supreme Lord in which appears Yad Bhagavata Mahamya, the glories of the devotees. And by hearing the glories of the devotees, Bhagavad Bhakti Vardhanam, you can understand that, right? It means hearing the glories of the devotees, our Bhakti Vardhanam increases. And so it's very effective and essential to hear the glories of the Vaishnavas deeply. And what will be the result? Bhakti will appear in our hearts, and if there's already something there, it will vardana, it will grow, it will increase. Now, he says especially, yet Bhagavatam, the glories of the Bhagavatas, they are the devotees. Who have realized Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhakta Bhagavatam? All the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam are living in their throat, waiting to jump out. They are the embodiment of all the rasa, all the tattva, all the leaders, unlimited profound meanings of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam, Tanam Asvadora Sikai Saha. Rupa Goswami said, one must taste the meanings of each word, no, each syllable of Srimad Bhagavatam in the company of Rasik Vaishnavas. They are Bhagavatas. Sutta Goswami himself, who is speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, he is Bhagavatam. And at the end, the very end, in the twelfth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami Bhagavatam said, Kasma yena vibhasi toya matalo jnana pradipa pura tadru bena chanana daya unaye krishnaya tadru bena yogrindraya tanatmanata bhagavadrataya karunyatas tat shudham vimalam vishokam amritam satyam param dimahi. What is he saying? Satyam Param Dimani. Let us meditate. Satyam Param Dimani on the highest truth. That Satyam, Satyam Ratam, Satyam Param Sri Satyam. That is Krishna himself. Let us meditate on Krishna. Kasma Yena Vivas Toyam. It was Krishna who manifested this Srimad Srimad Bhagavatam. Vibhasita means he revealed. In other words, even Krishna did not create Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is eternal. When Krishna revealed it, it wasn't new. Srimad Bhagavatam is eternal. In fact, it's his own sound vibration form. Hmm? It's a Vanmayi Murti, Krishna in the form of words. And Krishna himself revealed it in the beginning, Jnana Pudipa Pura. In ancient times, this Gyan Pradeep, this lamp of divine knowledge, he re revealed it to Brahma. Then, Tadru Bena Chanada Daya. Tadru Bena means in that root, in that very form, he revealed to Narad. What does that mean? <coughs> it means that Krishna assumed the form of Brahma, and in the form of Brahma, he revealed it to Narad. Tadru Bena Chanada Daya. Krishnaya Tadru Pena. Then he says again, Tadru Pena <coughs> means, and then. Krishna took the form of Narad and revealed it to Vyas. Yogi Indraya Tadatmanata, here Tadatmanata means in that form again, three times in this verse. Tadrupena, Tadrupina, Tadatmana. Then, having revealed it to Vyasadeva, then Krishna became Vyasadeva and revealed it to Shukadeva Swami. 
Bhagavat Rathaya Karun Nitas. And then Shukudev Goswami revealed it to me. Sudha Goswami speaking, right? He's the disciple of Shukudev Goswami. So it's Tatsudam, the Malam Vishimad Bhagavatam is Shuddha, completely pure, completely immaculate. It is the eternal spotless nectar. Now, Sutta Goswami is being very humble. He's not saying, he's not saying to um, Shoni Parishi, oh, and now Krishna has taken my form and is revealing it to you, out of humility. But that's the Dwani. Dwani means the suggestion in the poem. So out of humility, he's not saying that, but that's clearly what he's saying. So Sila Jiva Goswami, in his commentary on this, he said, this is the glory of the Bhagavad Guru. You know, people say, what's his Bhagavad Guru? never heard of Bhagavad Guru. There's no such thing as Bhagavad Guru. This verse is actually the explanation of the meaning of Bhagavad Guru. And Jiva Goswami, he, he explains that this is the Bhagavad Guru Mahatmya and describes the Sampradaya of the Bhagavad Gurus. So, don't think that Prabhupada Bhakti Sanjata invented this new new thing. This is actually our Siddhanta, our philosophy. But it's not understood by those who are in Vaidimark and those who are ignorant of the true nature of the Radha 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 Nuga Bhakti. Bhagavad Mahat means Radha Nuga Bhakti. So this is the glory of the Vaishnava. That as you know, it is said in Upanishads that um, Nayam Atma Pravachanena Labyo Namedyam Nabhavuna Sutena Yamedri Se Vrindu Tena Labyas Tasyai Tatma Vibhudete Tanum Swam The Supreme Lord cannot be known by vast intelligence, He cannot be known by so much Vedic study, by giving learning discourses. How is He known? He's known to that person to whom He Himself reveals it. Tanum Swam that means Krishna himself takes the form, Sakshad Haritvena, of Guru, of the Mahabharat, in the Bhagavad Prampara, and Krishna himself reveals himself. This is the glory of the Vaishnava. Therefore it says, Yadyapya Mara Guru Chaitanya Das, Tata Pi Janya Ami Tahara Bhakash. Guru Rupa Krishna Maya, Shastra Pramani, Guru Rupa Krishna Pita Karin Bhakti Gane. Guru is one form of Krishna, it's the form of Krishna in which he distributes his mercy to the devotees. So, Vaishnavas are very great. Without them, we cannot get bhakti. This is one of our axioms of spiritual life. Hmm? Maharaj can explain. Rahu Ganaita, you know this? Rahu Ganaita Tapasai Nayati. He knows it like Swarup Dhamadhar Goswami. Swarup Dhamadhar Goswami was the most learned among the associates of Mahaprabhu, no one knew because he didn't speak so much. So, in Srimad Bhagavatam, again and again, this principle is there. Rahu Ganaita Tapasana Yati Nacheji Anir Vapana Kriyadva Nachanda Sanai Rajalakni Surya Binam Hat Parar Jogishekam. Not by doing austerities, not by taking sannyas. Not by study of the Vedas, not by performance of sacrifices, not by mm, immersing yourself in the freezing cold water in the winter or doing austerities in the hot sun surrounded by blazing fire in the summer. How does one attain bhakti and realize Parantattva Sri Krishna? How? Vina Mahat Padarajo Unless one is the, mm, takes Abhishek, a complete shower, in the foot dust of the pure Vaishnavas then these truths cannot be revealed, they cannot be known. Prahlad Maharaj has said also, hmm? That unless and until one uh, smears his body in the foot dust of the Mahabhagavats, pure Vaishnavas, his anartas will not go away. His attachments, his illusion, misconceptions, not going anywhere. <laughs> After many, many years here in chanting, Mahat Kripa Bina Kona Karma Bhakti Nai. Krishna Bhakti Duri Rai Sansa Nai Shai. Without the mercy of Mahat, nothing that you do will even be Bhakti. It will not be Bhakti. 
even you're even chanting and remembering. But it seems like it will not be bhakti. Without Mahat Krima Kripa, what to speak of being bhakti, one cannot even loosen the bondage of material existence. Sansar Nahit So this is an axiomatic truth of Vaishnavism that without Sadhu Sangha and Vaishnav Seva, we cannot realize the divine transcendental truth. And what's more, even associating with the Shuddha Vaishnavas, like Vlad Maharaj, like Bharat Maharaj, who spoke in these verses that we, we're actually speaking, Rahu Karaita Tapasaram Yajati is spoken by Bharat Maharaj. Naisam hmm? Nishistab is spoken by Vlad Maharaj. But even associating with such Vaishnavas, one will not realize Radha Seva. Radha Krishna Lila. That only comes from Anuradha Radha Padam Bhujarinu Anasritya Vrindata Vitat Padankam Asambhasita Bhava Gambira Chitan Kutasham Sisyo Sindhora Sashava Graha Siddha Raghunath Daskaswami said Three conditions unless and until one takes shelter of the dust of the lotus feet of Shrimati Raghunath Unless and until one takes shelter of Brajagham, which is decorated with the sweet footprints of Srimati Radhika. And unless and until Asambhasita Bhava Gambira Chitan, one has Sambhasita, that means conversation, profound, beautiful conversation with a Vaishnava whose heart, whose chitta is deeply absorbed in Radha Seva. Then, Kuta, Shama Sindhu, Rasa Sabagaha. Where is Shama Sindhu? That means the ocean of Srimvarasa. Where? That means no one can even know in which direction to take the first step in the direction of that ocean without fulfilling these three conditions. Hmm? One of which, the most important of which, is the association of the Braj Rasi Vaishnavas. So, these are our, these are axiomatic proofs of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And one may hear them and accept them. But what I want to do this evening is try to express in accordance with the conception of our Gaudiya Charyas exactly why the Sadhu Sangha is absolutely necessary. This is our subject for this evening. I will just at this moment only decorating the altar. Now we are introducing the actual Qatar of the past. We have decorated the altar now, and now the Qatar is coming. This is the subject. Why? We need Sadhu Sangha. So, first question is this. Why? Does God create the world? Why does this world exist? The actual cause of the creation is the devotee, the love of the devotee. In the Bhagavad Gita, he said, Madhvakta nam vinodartam karomi vivida kriya. Supreme Lord says, I have many activities, many pastimes. And I do them for the pleasure of my devotees. That's why I have pastimes. For, to give pleasure. Mad, mad bhakta vinodartam. To give vino pleasure to my devotees. Krishna said. So the Srishti Lila, that is the creation of the world, is no except he doesn't say, I have so many pastimes and they're all to please my devotees, except for the creation of the world. Even the Srishti Lila, the creation of the world, the cause is the bhakti, the love of the devotee. What is the, how is that? In the seventh canto, Yudhisthira, uh, sorry, uh, Narad Rishi explains this to Yudhisthira Maharaj. He says, Yada Sikshu Pura Atmana Paro, Rajasrityat Esha Pritakso Mayaya, Satvam Vitrit Kyasu, Ranasu Ishwaraha, Saisha Manas Tamasthirayat Kyasu. The meaning is this. During the time of the Pralai, the annihilation, there's no manifestation of the world. 
At that time, all the elements are dissolved and the souls, they enter into the body of Vishnu. Hmm? Everything is in a dormant position. But there are devotees from the previous creation and they have progressed so far in their devotion, but they haven't become perfect yet. And because of that, they, those, those who have not attained yet to bath, they cannot go and take birth in the Lila or go to Vaikuntha. So they were absorbing the body of Vishnu. But then the Supreme Lord is thinking, Oh, I want to accept their service of those devotees. I want to give them a chance to perfect their sadhana and come to me. So feeling separation from them and with great joy, the Supreme Lord, by His Swarup Shakti, His Kriya Shakti, He gives the new bodies to the devotees. So, sadhan forms so that they can perform their sadhan and become perfect and come to Him. Now, how does the Kriya Shakti of the Supreme Lord, which is of Swarup Shakti, lead to creation? We should know that the Kriya Shakti of the Supreme Lord wants to give joy to the devotees and give them bodies so they can serve Him. That's called Bhakti Vinodaya, for the purpose of giving Vinod joy to the devotees. Bhakti Vinodaya. So, the Mukya Pravriti of His Kriya Shakti, that is His power of activity, oh, perhaps I have to just give a little context. Supreme Lord has one energy that acts in a variety of ways. And according to the variety, the, the ways in which it acts, it has a name. You see? So, when it manifests the spiritual world, it's called Antaranda, Antaranda Shakti. When it manifests the material world, it's called Bhagiranga Shakti. When it manifests the Jivas, it's called Tatasta Shakti. Right? Now, Krishna also has Icha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, sorry, Jnana Shakti, Icha Shakti, and Kriya in that order. Because first you have to have jnana, awareness, consciousness. When you're conscious, you can have each, you can desire something. But having a desire is not good unless you can fulfill it. So you need kriya, the power to act. So Supreme Lord has three vibhavs, three vibhavs, that is the internal, external, and marginal potency. He has three prabhavs. Prabhavs means influences. That is, is, is jnana shakti, icha shakti, and kriya shakti. And he has three um, anubhavs, that which gives realization of the spiritual world and in transcendental emotions. That is Sandini, Sambit, and Ladini. So this is a summary of, of all the energies of the Lord. What are they? Three Vaibhavs, three Prabhavs, and three Anubhavs. Okay, just make sure everyone's paying attention. What are the three Vaibhavs? Three vibhavs, the internal potency, Antaranga Shakti, the Bahiranga Shakti, external, and then the Tasetaji. Okay, three vibhavs. Okay, what are the three prabhavs, the influences? Because these influences act on all the energies. They act on the internal, the external, and the marginal. So, what are the three prabhavs, influences of the Lord? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. 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 And Gyan. Yeah, exactly but in the other order. So, Gyan, Icha, and Kriya. Okay? And then, Lord has three Anubhavs. They are? Anubhav means feeling. Feeling or realization. Sandini and Ladini. Yes, Sandini, existence. Sambit, the spiritual consciousness. And Ladini, the pleasure potency. Sambit and Ladini mixed together is Vakti Shakti. Okay? So, these are the energies of Lord. Now, by His Kriya Shakti, his transcendental Kriya Shakti acts upon the material energy to give a body to his devotees. Because this is the truth of the matter, that the Supreme Lord never interacts with his material energy, he only interacts with his spiritual energy. So because the devotees are related to him, they have some bhakti, then Krishna gives them bodies through his Kriya Shakti. That's the Mukhivriti, the main um, function of his Kriya Shakti. That is called Mukya Vritti. But that, that Mukya Vritti of the Kriya Shakti, which is giving bodies to the devotees, has an abbas, a semblance. 
that is called the Perviti Abbas. And that is what does Gun Udbod, that means awakens the Gunas. You see? The world has to be created. But he doesn't awaken the Gunas because he wants to create. He wants to give bodies to his devotees. So through his spiritual Kriya Shakti, he gives them bodies. That is the Mukya Praviti, the main uh, intention, his main intention of his spiritual energy. But the, incidentally, the Abbas of that energy does Gun Udbod, destabilizes the three Gunas, and the whole creation comes about incidentally. So we can give an example, just like uh, today, my dear God brother Dan and Jai Prabhu, he was cooking. So it was a bit cold because the AC was on very high where we were staying. But he started cooking and the whole place became warm. So Jiva Goswami gives us example, not the example of Dan and Jai, but he says that when we cook in the kitchen, our mukya perverti, our main intention was to cook. But incidentally, the kitchen became warm. Right? You understand? So in the same way, why does the world exist? Because Krishna loves his devotees and he wants to reciprocate with them. And incidentally, everything else pops out. Miami, New York, London, Rome, all the other countries and all the conditioned souls. It's just like incidentally. But that wasn't the intention. Yeah? Understand? So this world exists for the happiness of the devotees. So they can do their sadhana and come to him. The Mukya Praviti gives bodies to the devotees of the Kriya Shakti, and the Praviti Abbas manifests the, the uh, causes the Gunas to act, and everything else is going on by that Abbas of the original Kriya Shakti. So, there's another little technical term here. It is said that the Kriya Shakti, which is in Maya, that is Rajagun, the mode of passion, does all the activities. That is Pravitya Sambalita. It, it is united with the Abbas of the spiritual Kriya Shakti. See? So the Kriya Shakti, if that is Krishna interacting with his devotee, and its Abbas becomes united with the, the Rajagun by which the whole universe, all the creation goes on. That's what Maharaj was saying. The sex energy, right? Passion that goes in creation. Okay. Now. When the Supreme Lord comes to this world, he never interacts with the Gunas. This is an amazing thing. And so, if you can go just, I think, forward one. Yeah. So, this is the verse we're discussing today. Narad Muni is saying in seventh canto, Jyotir adir iva bati, sangatam na virichate, vajantatmanam atmastam matitva kavayon tata. The meaning is this. Abhati means appears. The Supreme Lord's energy, Ivabhati appears in this world, Jyoti Adi, like Jyoti, like light, or fire, and the other elements. Sangatan means because it's mixed in with the bodies of the living entities in his leela, some who assist him and some who oppose him. you the person cannot distinguish how the energy of the Lord is in the persons who are interacting with him in his leela. But Vidanti means the Kavis in the last line, the wise persons, the learning persons, Kavya, the Kavis, Vidanti, they know this. They can see Atmanam Atmas Atmastan. The power of the Lord enters into the living entities who are interacting with him in his lila. Matitwa, that means after deliberating on it for a long time and gradually negating uh, the other possibilities which are not possible. Negating other ideas. This that's the overview of the verse. Now don't be uh, don't be confused. I'll spell it out very clearly and illustrate it. So everything, I hope, will be as clear as a crystal. If it's not as clear as the crystal, you can write your complaint and put it in my box. It's my fault, okay? So what it means is this. Let's say when Supreme Lord, like in the journey of the ocean of milk, Lord Vishnu appears, the demons are there, the demigods, and he's interacting with them all. So it looks like 
God, who is transcendental, is interacting with his material energy. It looks like that. Right? But actually, the Supreme Lord never interacts with his material energy. He interacts only with his spiritual energy. He interacts with his devotees. But we see when he appears, that let's say if he comes to protect Prahlad Maharaj, he's interacting with Prahlad Maharaj, but he also interacts with demons, and he also interacts with demigods. The demigods assist him, and the demons try to oppose him. But the truth of the matter is, he never, ever interacts with the material energy, with the three gunas, the demigods in Satvagun, or the, the, the Asuras in Rajagun, or the Yakshas and Rakshasas in Tamagun. How does it happen? You know, in the Gita, Krishna said that there are three gunas. And when one goes up, the others go down. And when the other one goes up, then the others go down. They're always in competition. They never all go up at the same time. Only Krishna's spiritual energy can every all the energies go up at the same time. But the mature gunas are always fluctuating, competing with each other. Now, when the devas and the demons churn the ocean of milk, actually, the demigods have no power to assist the Supreme Lord, and the demons have no power to oppose him. But his power enters into them, and therefore they can participate. Perhaps you know, when they first started to churn, they wanted to churn, they carried the mountain into the ocean and sank, and they couldn't do anything, and many of them were injured. So what happened is, it said that Satvagun increased to give power of the de- to the devotees, Rajagun increased to give power to the demons, and Tamagun increased to make Vasuki become senseless, because it was very painful being, you know, the churning uh, robe in the past time. So three, it's mentioned in Shiva about how the three gunas all increased at the same time. That is impossible. So what actually happened here is, that even though everything in the world is going on by the Praviti Abbas, Maharaj was saying, the shadow, the material, the material is like the shadow of the spirit. Everything is going on in a shadow-like way. But during the Leela, the Mukya Praviti, the spiritual potency of the Supreme Lord's Kriya Shakti, takes over and enters into everyone, knowingly or unknowingly. So the spiritual shakti enters in here, atma na atma stam. Those who are kavis, they understand that the Supreme Lord's energy entered into the demons and the demigods and the Sufi to give them the strength to assist or oppose in his lila. So the Supreme Lord, though he comes to this world, he's still only interacting with his spiritual energy. He's never interacting with the material energy. Now someone may say, well look, The demigods and the demons, they don't feel like they're under the spiritual energy or anything. They're not becoming whatever in mind or whatever. So that's what this was explaining. Jyotirani Ivavati. His energy is entering in just like light, etc. and other elements. So we can illustrate it very nicely. The example is given of a convex lens. If the sun's shining, and you take a, a, a lens, a magnifying glass, and you hold it, it concentrates the rays of the sun, and you can set fire to grass. Now, if someone doesn't understand the science behind it, they think that this glass, this convex lens, has the power to burn grass. Does a lens have the power to burn grass? No. If you bring it one here, can you burn the grass? If it's nighttime, can it burn the grass? But a person with simple childish intelligence will say, wow, look at this, this, this glass can burn the grass. But it doesn't. It was, it's the power of the sun entering through it, and then it has that capability. So in the same way, in all the incarnations of the Supreme Lord, when he's fighting with any demons or whether demigods are assisting him, no one actually has the power to assist. No one has the power to oppose only his own shakti enters into them and he does his perfect lila in such no one messes up, no rasabas will come, no one will actually you know, throw a spanner in, or in his plan. Everything, every aspect of his lila is done by his kriya shakti entering into everyone, 
but they don't know it. Just like a child thinks the burning power is coming from the magnifying glass. Another example is, he says, Joji Ardi, light, etc. means the other elements as well. Let's say if there's a drum, right? And you beat the drum, boom. Everyone sees that the sound is coming from the drum. Right? You all saw it, did you, did, you know? The sound came from the drum. We, we speak like that in a conventional way. But the drum is made of clay, right? And what's the quality of earth? Maharaj was telling you everything. He prepared everything. It was a divine arrangement. Yeah? The quality of earth is fragrance. So the, the drum which is made of earth, its quality is fragrance. The, what it, where does sound come from? Akash. But because the Akash is Sangha, Sangha means compounded in the drum, therefore we think that we think that the, that the clay of the drum is making the sound, but actually it's being released from Akash. You see? So in the same way, the demons and demigods who are either opposing him, the Lord or assisting the Lord have no power to do so. They feel like they're doing it, but the actual power is the Supreme Lord's Kriya Shakti and the whole thing is transcendental. But they think that they are assisting or opposing the Supreme Lord in His Leela, just as in a conventional way we think, oh well, the drum made the sound. No, the sound is all pervading, it's in the Akash, Akash and it was released when you hit the drum. Okay, so this is the Sankhya philosophy. So, now, what, why are we discussing this? Because the pure Vaishnav, Guru Krishna Rupahana Shastra Pramani, is one form of the Supreme Lord. Tanum Swam, the pure Vaishnav is one body of the Lord. So when the pure Vaishnava comes into this world, he also does not interact with the material energy. When the pure Vaishnava comes to this world, <coughs> no one can assist him. And no one can oppose him. You think that the Sahajas and Jack Gosai and others in Navadri can kill Bhaktisthan Sotako when they attacked him during Navadri Parakrama throwing stones from the rooftops? This is a Leela, only to manifest the glory of Srila Bhakti Pragan Keshav Goswami, who took Prabhupada into a room and exchanged clothes with him. In this way, this is really Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotako was giving him sannyas. And also showing to the world the dedication that that disciple is ready to take his life in his hand to serve his Guru Parada. So pure Vaishnavas, when they come in this world, they don't interact with the external energy. Wherever they go, Krishna's Kriya Shakti takes over everything. No one can assist them and no one can oppose them. If you think, oh yes, yes, I'm doing so much service for Gurudev, what will happen? Fall down. You will fall down. Exactly. Gurudev is not like that. Once Gurudev was in Australia, and someone asked him, you have thousands of disciples all over the world. Hmm? So don't you feel that this is a great burden on you? So the Gurudev said, no, not at all. Why? He said, I am doing nothing behind the curtain. Gormi they are doing everything. <laughs> yeah? This is really what's going on. Hmm? Once some devotees came to see the Prabhupada, I said, Srila Prabhupada, in your books you have said that the Madhya Madhikari is a preacher. So we are preaching. So does that mean that we are Madhya Madhikaris? Srila Prabhupada said, I am preaching. You just do what I tell you to do. <laughs> <laughs> Understand? So what happens is, when persons come into the association of a pure Vaishnava, He's not interacting with the material world actually. And just as the Supreme Lord Shakti, Kriya Shakti, enters into both demons and demigods without them knowing to orchestrate the whole Leela. So when a pure devotee is moving into this world, the Kriya Shakti enters into those who so-called oppose him and those who so-called assist him. But those who assist him are very, very lucky. They are the lucky ones. They're, that's why when a pure Vaishnava Ashramaraj will tell you, we have seen Srila Bhogavan Raj walk into a temple room and devotees are doing a kirtan. 
you know, and it's kind of so-so. And he just glances like this, and then boom, everyone's floating in the sky. And the whole kirtan says, in green, go, 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 pray, madana, haidana, sam kirtana. What's going on? Huh? This is a fact. So, what happens is, that when we come into Vaishnav, many people also say this. They say, oh, I went to a festival with Gurudev. And I was flying in the sky, I was serving day and night, I didn't need to eat or sleep or anything. But then afterwards I went home. And then I watched TV and ate some chips. And now I can't chant or, you know, so much. And I can't finish 64 rounds or whatever. So I, don't feel, I don't feel in the end. What? Why is this? Hmm? Not surrendered. So when someone comes into the association of a sadhu, and they do, Atmani Veda, Diksha Kali Bhakta Kari Atma Samarpan, Say Kali Krishna Kari Tari, Atma Sam. Krishna accepts us. At that time when we give ourselves to Guru Dev, then being connected with the order of Guru, now he stays under the control of the Kriya Shakti. Once we're in, oh Maharaj, maybe you, I think you're probably both there. Remember Guru is festival in Verbania. I wasn't in Verbania. Italy. Were you in Verbania? Latin majority? Huh? Big festival there. Thou, Where is that? The, in Italy. Italy, Italy. Italy. There's a video online of big Sankirtan. The Krishna Das and myself and a thousand devotees, Gurudev sent us go out on the shore of the big lake there and through the town and make Sankirtan. So before that, Shamarani, Srimati Shamarani Didi, our very most senior Vaishnavi, she, she said to Gurudev, she said, Gurudev, if I go out on this Sankirtan, what benefit will people get? Because my chanting is not pure. So what benefit will they get? Gurudev said, because it is my order that you do it, my potency will be there. Hmm? So when we surrender to our Gurudev, and when we serve the mission of our Gurudev, then the strength is there, the Kriya Shakti of the Supreme Lord is there. And if we are preaching or doing something, and then we think, oh, I am great, I am doing everything, <coughs> then what will happen? Puna Baba. Puna Mosik Baba. <laughs> okay, she knows, but for the benefit of others, perhaps you know there was one sadhu, he was doing badly and one little mouse came there. Oh, Mahatmaji, Sadhuji, Swamiji, help me, help me, I'm being chased by a cat. So then he blessed him, oh, may you become a cat. So then that mouse became a cat, and he went out. After a few days he came running. Oh, Guru Dev, help me, help me, I'm being chased by a dog. Okay, and he blessed and he became a dog. After a few days, he came running back. Gurudev, help, help! I mean, chased by a tiger. Okay, he blessed and he became a tiger. <laughs> then when he was a tiger, he thought, oh, I am hungry. This sadhu would be a good meal for me today. <laughs> and he was about to eat the sadhu, and the sadhu said, Puna Musik Baba. <laughs> Again, we come a <laughs> Yeah? We became a rat again, <laughs> a little rodent, from a tiger to a rodent. Yeah. Serious stuff. <laughs> yeah. So this is the thing. When we come into the association of pure devotees, knowingly or unknowingly, to oppose or to assist, then the spiritual energy comes. Yeah. Those who surrender, they say, stay connected with that. And that gives them a power. What power is that? To do sadhana. This is why it says, Mahat Kripa Bhina Kona Kama Bhakti Nai. Without the mercy of a sadhu, nothing that you do is bhakti. So Rupa Goswami Bhagavad has said, Ado Sradha. First, faith comes, that is also by association. Sradha means hearing from a pure Vaishnava. By the power of their words, a vishesh sanskar, vishesh sanskar, that means an intense impression comes in your chitta, vishesh sanskar. And it manifests in the form of shastriya shraddha. What's written in the scripture is true. Right? So that's adosradha. 
Scripture says what? Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Shastrikai. So say the Sadhu Sangha. So first Radha, then Sadhu Sangha. The first Sadhu Sangha is more or less, from your point of view, kind of random. It happens somewhere random. But once you have Sadhu, now with intention, you're associating with the Sadhu, really to hear deeply and learn and progress. Then, after Sadhu Sangha, we have in faith, in out of perhaps several sadhus, we feel particularly inspired by one, and we take shelter and receive initiation. And then comes what? What's the next stage? Bhajan Kriya. Why is it called Bhajan Kriya? Why is it not called Bhajan? Because it's not Bhajan. It's just you came under the Kriya Shakti. Understand? Kriya. To do Bhajan. The Kriya Shakti, the Prabhava of the Lord, which is a Kriya Shakti, that's not enough to do Bhajan. That's enough to get you, your senses moving. Kriti Sadhya, Bhavet Sadhya. What do you need to do Bhajan? <coughs> the three Anubhavs. Sandini, Sambit, and Ladini. Understand? So, Adosrata, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya. You have come under the Kriya Shakti by surrendering to Guru. That means you get some potency to take your bead back, to wake up every morning, to sing to the Supreme Lord, and remember your mantras and, and chant Harinam every day, and engage in service. That's why it's called Bhajana Kriya. Bhajana means service, but it's just the Kriya. It's the activities. But without mercy, even those activities you cannot do. And if someone is doing the, what looks like these activities, but they never had Sadhu Sangha, that is not actual Bhakti or Bas. Sorry, that is not the Chaya Bhakti or Bas. It will be Prati Bindu Bhakti or Bas. Just like in a yoga studio, some Mayavadis come and sing the Kirtan. Right? It looks like Bhakti, but it's Prati Bimba. It has no connection with the real thing. There's no Kriya Shakti there at all. But if someone has connection with the pure devotee, they're doing Kirtan under his guidance, on his order, then Kriya Shakti is actually Bhajana Kriya. Then it's still Bhakti Abbas, but it is a Chaya Bhakti Abbas. It has a chance to become pure Bhakti. You understand Chaya and Pratibhimba? Pratibhimba means reflection, and Chaya means a shadow. The difference between the reflection and the shadow is if there's a reflection of your face, it's not touching, it's not connected to your face. But if there's a shadow, if you follow the shadow, it leads to, your, to the real thing. Right? So Chaya Bhakti Abbas leads to the real thing. And what my body is the thing is it's not going anywhere. Okay. So, because it's offensive. My body, Krishna Parani. Now, so, Bhajana Kriya. When you engage in Bhajana Kriya, gradually, 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 then what happens? Satam Prasangan Mamavirya Samvido Pavanti Ripkana Rasayana Kata Tadyoshnat Asu Apavarga Vartmani Sratha Rati, Bhakti, Anu, Kravisyati. We have discussed how, by association and surrender, we do Bhajana Kriya. But what we really want is to attain Sambit. Because the realize, there's no realization from the Kriya Shakti, it will only make you act. You have to have Anubhav, Anubhuti, realization. So that is done by the Sambit Shakti. So, satam prasangan from the prasanga, that means prakrista rupain sangha, excellent sangha, prakrista sangha, excellent sangha, from that comes mamavirya, my shakti, what kind? Sambhido, that means the influence of sambhid shakti. Realization will come. So, satam prasangan mamavirya sambhido bhavanti rikkana rasayana kata, and when you hear Sweet Harikata from the lips of Prakrista Sangha, very excellent association. Then it becomes Rasayana. That means it doesn't only produce Bhajana Kriya, it will produce Ruchi, taste. Actually, in the commentary on this verse, Vishnu Charitaka literally says, Aprakrista Sangha, Bhajana Kriya Matram. From Sangha, who are not Prakrista, excellent, from Aprakrista Sangha, you'll only get Bhajana Kriya. But from Prakrista Sangha, the Kata will turn into Rasayana. In other words, not only will you do Bhajana Kriya, practice, but you become steady, and then Ruchi, taste will come. Ruchi will come. So that Ruchi is the beginning of the actual 
Raganuga Sadhana, is it? So Sraddha means the eligibility, here Sraddha in this verse means the eligibility for real Sadhana. Hmm? From Adho Sraddha up to Nishta, this is only, this is actually not Bhakti Tattva, it's actually the uh, Sraddha Tattva, the development of faith, from soft faith to firm faith. Sila Bhakti Tattva, Bhakti Tattva, this is the, that is the Sraddha Tattva, and Bhakti is the Sambhita and Ladini. So first Kriya comes, engages you, then gradually by becoming steady in the practice, then Sambhita will come. So Satam Prasangam Mamavirya Sambhita Bhavanti Ripkana Rasayana Kata. Okay, good test. What comes from? Aprakrista Sangha, not excellent Sangha. Some Sangha not excellent. What comes? Vajana Kriya, yes. What comes from Prakrista Sangha? Ruchi, and then Bhavana and Prem. Sraddha Rati Bhakti Manukya. Exactly. Mamavira or some with some revelation, realization of some picture. So now, thus far, we have discussed the necessity of associating with the pure Vaishnava and surrendering and serving him in order to get bhakti. But the topic of our festival is what? Radha Tantra. Service of Radha Krishna in Vrindavan. So that bhakti even cannot be attained by pure Vaishnavas, but who are not Brad's Rasi Rupa Nuga Vaishnavas. It should be a special type of, of Vaishnava. That's why Ravana Das Swami said that verse, Asambhasit Tadbhava Gabiraji Dan, without the Sambha, the conversation with the Rasik Vaishnavas whose hearts are very deeply absorbed in Radha Seva. Kuta Shama Sindhu Rasa Shava Gaha Where do you take your first step? Which direction is the ocean of Sunga Rasa? No one knows. Uh, very mysterious. I tell one story. Once there was a scholar, Pandit, and he went to study and he became very learned, theoretically, in all the Upanishads, all the Sadarshans, you know, the classical Vedic six systems of philosophy. And after in Banaris, Kashi, many Maya bodies are there. But after some time, he came to visit Vrindavan. And there being in Vrindavan, he got inspired and he took up devotional service. And he became a devotee. Because he associated with some devotees there, and he also became a devotee, started the devotional path. So because he was a bandit, people respected him, and they used to ask him to give a class and speak some Harikata. So then that bandit was now a devotee. He was explaining the nature of Maya, this material energy and the spiritual energy. And he said, unless and until the heart is completely free from rajas, and completely free from tamas, then one cannot realize the service of Radha and Krishna. Uh, understand? Can you realize the service of Radha and Krishna while the heart is contaminated by grudges, mode of passion, worldly desires, attachment, false ego, bodily identification? And tamas, anger, and laziness, and envy. Is it possible? It's impossible. Hmm? So, was what he said is correct? Yes? Correct? correct. One Rasik Vaishnava was there in the audience. He said, Excuse me. <laughs> if you kindly allow me to say something, please kindly allow me to say a few words. But what you have said has avyapti dosh avyapti dosh that means the defect of an under extension of the definition huh? in other words it's true but it does not fully fit the bill it doesn't fully cover the instance in other words and then because Rasik Vaishnavas they have a particular way of expressing which is not so prosaic, more poetic. Yeah? So then that Vaishnava, he quoted Rupa Goswami, he said, Harim Baraha, 
Thurat Asanga Tayatya Muntama Brajabama Drisham Napadati Pakata Asar Drisham Sute Api This was spoken by Paula Masi Devi. She saw that the sun was going down. And evening time was coming. The sky became full of dust. Why? <laughs> Krishna is returning from the forest, playing his flute with all his cowboys and the cows. How beautiful! How sweet! When he's approaching, the deer from the forest, they want to follow him, but they're a bit shy, so they stop at the edge of the forest, they stop there, and with longing eyes they look as he continues, and they become jealous of the cows, the cows can keep going. <laughs> as, he, as he's approaching the village, it's so beautiful because the, the sun is just setting and the sky has become red like the sindoor in the hair of a chaste woman. And just like when Krishna plays his flute, and all the cows look up with bright eyes looking at him. So in the village of Nandagao, there are 88,000 lattice windows. And now it's become a little bit dark. And the bridge baskets have lit in the lamps inside the house, houses. So the light is shining from 88,000 lattice windows in the village of Nandagao. As if the village itself is looking at Krishna's arrival with 88,000 eyes full of love. And the flags are flapping on the houses like the heart of the goddess of Vrindavan, ecstatic that Krishna is returning. And Krishna is entering into the village. And, but it's very hard to see it. Why? Because it's going dark and the dust has filled the air. So Purnamasi Devi said, Harimu Dishate Rajobara Puratana Sangatayatu Muntama Mama the meaning is that Krishna's divine pastimes are covered by a type of transcendental tamas and rajas. In other words, the gopis, they can't meet with Krishna until it goes dark. That's tama. Unless it goes dark, they won't be able to go out to meet with him. And Unless the sky becomes full of dust, the word for dust in Sanskrit is Rajas. So unless this holy dust comes into the air and Krishna has returned, and unless the sun is setting and it's going dark, then it's not possible for gopis to have the chance to meet with Sri Krishna. So it is said that the divine Leela of Krishna is covered by a kind of transcendental Raja and transcendental Tama such that even persons who know all the Vedas, Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yaga Veda, Atharva Veda, all the Upanishads and Vedanta, knowing all the Vedas, even they cannot see the Brajavila of Sri Krishna. What? Because they're not Rasik. They know that Brahma, Jiva, and Maya, and all these things. But still, they cannot enter. So that sadhu said to him, what you have said is true. You cannot realize the service of Krishna without being free from material writers and tamas. But it's not the whole story. Because unless one has the association of a Brajrasi Vaishnava, the samskar will not come by which one has a taste, ruchi, in the service of Radha and Krishna. So, this is a very important point, this samskar. Otherwise you won't have taste. You see, there are many devotees practicing devotional service for a long time, and they're interested in so many things. Whatever, cow protection, prasadam distribution, the, the structure of the universe, the, whatever, the, the, whether the jiva fell from the spiritual world or somewhere else, or whatever. And for, that, for like 20, 30, 50, 70 years, their whole life, they're going on about these things. Why? Because the Sanskar of Brajrasik association has not appeared in the heart. See the Rupa Goswami part said, this is very important. Yatotaram asoswada 
विशेष उल्लास माय अभी राति वासनाया स्वर्गी वास ते कॉपी कस्यचित it means it's a this verse from patra samhita sindhu and it's also quoted in madhu toto rupa swami chetan charan so here it's discussed the answer to two questions the first question is of all the rasas shantaras dasya sakya vatsaya madhurya of all of them do they all give an equal amount of joy or not so rupa swami is answering यो धोतरा The, this hierarchy of rasas. That's about. Now, then the question comes: If Madhurya rasa, if Madhur rasa gives the most joy, why doesn't everyone just gravitate to Madhur rasa? Right? People go in the Sri Sampradaya to worship Lakshmi Narayan. People worship Sita Ram. Follow Dasaras of Hanuman. People come also into our sangha, and some people they want to. Love Krishna like a child or like a coward boy. What? Everyone does. It's not gravitating to Madhurya. So what? What's the reason? What is the reason? So, Rupa Goswami Pai is saying, Rati Vasana Swadhi. A taste in a particular mood depends on Vasana. Vasana means samskars, impressions, and those impressions only come from. Rasik Vaishnav Sangha, and you develop a taste in the mood in accordance with the, those you have association with. That's why Rupa Goswami says, "Sajata yashe esnik day sadhu sangha sotho gari." One should associate with like-minded Vaishnavas. If your if your mood is sakras, go and be with the sakras. Those who have that mood. If your mood is in Madhurya Rasa, Radha Dasyam, Manjri Bhav, then we have to seek out. Such Vaishnavas only by associating with them and hearing from them, such an impression will come that will have a taste in hearing, chanting, and remembering Radha Nam Rup Gun Parika Lila Seva. All of these things. This is what we will be discussing over in the seven classes. Hmm? Only by that association. Now, Sri Vishnu Chakravarti has said, "Look, there there are three situations, three possible situations." How does a person have taste in a particular mood? It could either be the person has no samskars, he has samskars in one rasa, or he has samskars in multiple rasas. In other words, he associated with different devotees in different moods. These are the three possibilities. So then he examines them one by one. First case: a person has no impressions of Braj Rasik Rupa Nuga association. And for that person, he won't have taste in any mood. So he'll just go on talking about whatever vegetarianism, reincarnation, and things like this. Whatever. He won't be attracted to one bath and focusing on that. So he's got no interest in any particular mood. He's in a very general sense. Then, what if a person has impressions of associating with different kinds of devotees? Someone in Dasya, someone in Sakya, someone in Vatsalya, someone in a Vaikuntha mood, and so on. Then he also won't develop a taste in one particular mood because he has internal confusion due to the mixture of samskars. He doesn't have a clear taste in any particular sambandha with Krishna, and therefore the answer is only the devotee who has one kind of impression. Develops the taste in one particular type of rati or stayiva or relationship with Krishna, and really is does a very strong sadhana. Kuti sadhya bhavet sadhya bhava sastadhana vidha nitya siddhasya bhava sya prakriti amrita sadhita. All is hearing, chanting, and remembering is all focused, one pointed on attaining that nitya siddha bhav, that eternally perfect mood. So. You know, Raghunath Das Goswami has also written about the necessity 
of associating with Radha's Bhartas. And he has experience. Why? He was associating with Srila Rupa Goswami himself. Hmm? You know Rupa Goswami used to go every day with Sarana Goswami and others and listen to Raghunath Bhakta Goswami reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. Because Raghunath Bhakta Goswami Mahaprabhu gave him his own Srimad Bhagavatam. That was his deity. That Bhagavatam is still there at the Gadi of Raghunath Bhakta in Vrindavan. Have you been there? Have you seen it? They only give darshan of Mahaprabhu's Bhagavatam in about five days of the year. Unless you are very close friends with the Pujari. <laughs> <laughs> So, everyone used to come and listen to Raghunath Bhakta Goswami because he used to sing the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam in so many different beautiful ragas. And hearing him, everyone was weeping. They were trembling, weeping, rolling on the ground, experiencing the... Satam Prasangam Mama Virya Sambhido Bhavanti Rikkarna Rasaya the Rasaya Nakata. A tonic for the ears and for the heart. But one person was not affected by the Kata. Who was not affected? Rupa Goswami. He was not crying. He was not rolling on the ground. He was just there. That blank expression. Everyone was wondering, how is this? How is this? Then someone noticed actually he's not breathing. <laughs> and then they took, they test his breathing. He pulled a little piece of cotton from his dhoti, one dhoti, and held it on the nose of Rupa Goswami to see if it was. And a little breath was coming. And it was so hot like fire, it gave a blister on the tip of his finger. <laughs> huh? Because he was feeling such intense separation from Radha and Krishna. Hmm? But it was not manifest outside because his heart is like an ocean. You know? If you put a little fish in a little fish bowl like that, it can swim around and splash the water out. But if you put that fish in a big ocean, it cannot change the form, the shape of the ocean. Even a whale cannot because it's so deep. So he was experiencing actually greater, bigger waves of ecstasy. Gopi Bhava, Rasamri Tabdi Lahari, Kalola Magno Mahur. One day Rupa Sanatana Ura Guru Jok, Sriji diving and surfacing again and again in the high tidal waves of Gopi Bhav. That Amrita. He was doing this. But because his heart is vast like an ocean, it wasn't splashing outside. Nothing was seen on the outside. So we want to have such association. From that will come not only by Janakriya. Some engagement in bhakti. By ordinary devotee association, we can become engaged, some connection. Eh? But Mama Vidya, some Vidya, some Sambit Shakti, Anubhuti, realization, and ultimately Bhakti Rasa. So Srila Raghunath Daskaswami said, Yadhyatna ta samadamatma videka yoga, adhyatma lagna ma vikarma bun manove. I am remembering my dear Rupa Goswami Park, Shiksha Guru Rupa Goswami Park. He made great endeavors. He tried again and again. Yadhyatnata Sama Dhamma Viveka Yoga. Through his character to instill me with the sense of vivek, discrimination. Nira nira chira hamsara kona pratak kori payata. What's the difference between Mishra Bhakti and Shuddha Bhakti? What's the difference between Sadhana Bhakti and Bhav Bhakti and Prema Bhakti? What's the difference between Vaini Bhakti and Radhanuga Bhakti? What's the difference between Dasya Saki Vatsara and Madhurya? In Madhurya, what, what are the varieties there? Prem, Sneyaman, Pranayara. To instilling me the fact the discrimination in all of these matters. And yoga, yoga here means Adyat Malagnam. By his association, I learned how to apply my mind 
fix my mind adhikar bhul manobe and that my mind will become nirvikar nirvikar concentrated when you sit to remember your gayatri mantras or when you sit to chant japa then is your mind nirvikar is it completely smooth and clean and unmoving bhakti yoga na manasi samyak pranite male that is completely samadhi halted and then the beautiful pastimes of krishna reflected in the shining mirror of that still mind what is going on what is happening <laughs> nirvikar or savikar <laughs> pramanda parikrama mind going on the program of the whole universe here and there <laughs> going to the supermarket going to the mother-in-law going to the cinema no why is our mind restless because we have not made a deep relationship with our Rasik Vaishnava when we have a deep loving relationship the Dati Patibhrinati Guyama Kedi Prachiti Bhunte Bhoje Te Chava Sarvida Priti Lakshanam giving some gifts, receiving something, revealing the heart in confidence, hearing some confidential katha, offering prasad and taking their remnants, gives when the exchanges of love are there, and serving, hearing again and again, then Arikara Bhund Manome Brahmanatta Saswami said, by his endeavor again and again, he made my chitta nirvikara. Hmm? That, that, Now the yogis also have nirvikar chitta when they meditate on Paramatma. So that's not enough. So Rupa said, that's with Aukam Sadaya Avaloka. And when he made my chitta nirvikar by his sweet smile and by his loving glance, now he has made my, mad, my heart mad and intoxicated for the beautiful sweet pastimes of Radha and Krishna. This is how it happens. Prajrasik Rupa Nuga Sangha. So Ramana Dasa Swami Pati said, Abhir Pali Pati Puti Kanda Dasabha Lasati Vlasya Varya Sri Rupa Chintama Lasati Sansto Matswanta Durdanta Ayat Churastam. The meaning is, my mind is like a wild horse. You can't control the wild horse. But there's one very powerful jockey horse rider hmm? and this horse rider is the embodiment of a very powerful desire to become the dasi the main servant of a that's a very sweet way of saying Radha a bhira malisho is from one jati one caste among the gods called Abhira. So the village that is it's called Abhira Pali. The, the, the village of the Abhira caste. So Abhira Pali Pati, there's a king in that village. Who's that? Nanda Maharaj. Abhira Pali Pati Putra. And Nanda Maharaj has a son. Abhira Pali Pati Putra, who is that? Krishna. Abhira Pali Pati Putra Kanta. And that Krishna, who is the son of the king of the Abhira village, has a lover. Kanta Radhika. So there is one powerful horse rider who is the embodiment of the strong desire to serve the lotus feet of Radhika. What is that? Sri Rupa Chintamala. The constant remembrance of the pastimes of Rupa Goswami. How he's hearing, how he's chanting, how he's remembering, how he was merciful to me by meditating on that Prajrashi Vaishnava. Then that strong desire to serve Radhika comes and sits on the wild horse of my mind and controls it and takes me to Goloka Vrindavan. Sila Rupa Goswami Pada Ki Jai! Sila Raghunath Aska Swami Pada Ki Jai! Sila Guru Deva Ki Jai! Sri Rupa Nuga Vaishnav Sangha Ki Jai! Vre Vrindavan Gai Lala Ki Jai! Sari Wali Ki Jai! Shri Prem Prabhu Ki Jai!